Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today for this very special keynote event that is live from Paris, France. The subject of the day, bring to light more than the eye can see, the future of digital pathology. We have a great program that is assembled for you today. Several amazing speakers, which will be introduced in detail by Jean-François Pomerol, the founder and CEO of the company, who's going to be with us in just a moment. We have a whole bunch of sections, as you can see. We're going to go through all this. We're hoping in about 45 to 50 minutes max. I think every moment is going to be worth your time, so stick around, be with us. And at the very end, uh, there'll be an opportunity to ask questions directly uh, from those experts in their space, uh, from North America, from Europe. Uh, there'll be a 10 to 15 minute Q&A at the end. So without further delay, I'd like to introduce to you the founder, president and CEO of Tribune Health, Jean-François Pomerol. Jean-François. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Gaetan. So pathology is facing an unprecedented and exciting time. Never the role of pathologist has been so crucial to enlighten medical decision in a context of targeted therapies and precision medicine, especially in oncology. But this opportunity comes also with few challenges. Ever more cases, ever less pathologist, increasing expectation from the clinician and the patient, high complexity in data analysis. Exciting time, I told you. You get the picture. We must do something. At Tribune Healthcare, we believe that digital pathology is essential for the future of pathology. It is a true revolution, enabling vast improvement in clinical diagnosis, in productivity, in workflow, and in economics. And we are just at the beginning of this extraordinary journey that will change us all forever. To symbolize the deep changes we are living, I want to make three major announcements today. First, I am pleased to inform you that we have decided to rebrand the name of the company from Tribun Healthcare to Trib with a V to Tribune Health with a U. New name, new logo, a new slogan, bring to light more than the eye can see. We want a brand more international, easier to pronounce, but still in connection with our history and with the medical activity of our clients. Second, I am delighted to launch today our brand new version of Calopix. Calopix 5 is not just, you know, a new version. It's a complete redesign very economical, full web, cloud native, open, scalable, and powered with AI. With this version, we have the basis for growth and new functionalities for the future around a complete imaging platform. Third, and most important, I am very honored to introduce you to three recognized speakers who will share their vision and experience in this keynote. Dr. Bin Young, Director of ePathology for Cleveland Clinics, Professor Catherine Gettier, Head of Pathology Department at Bicetre in Greater Paris Hospital, and Professor Intis Lobeck, Head of Translational Unit, uh, Research Unit at Bern University. Along with Tribune team, Gaetan, Saima, Mike, Norwen, they will, they will illuminate this keynote, this presentation. So I, I really hope you will enjoy this and want to thank them. And I give the talk to Dr. Bin Young uh, from Cleveland Clinic, who will talk about the future and the future and impact of digital pathology. First of all, I would like to thank the meeting organizer for a kind invitation and a kind introduction. I'm a practicing pathologist specializing in GYN pathology and cytology. My great honor to have opportunity in participation in this discussion. As we all know, accurate pathologic diagnosis is the foundation of modern medicine, the foundation of clinical treatment. In the past couple of decades, 
medicine and pathology practice modality has changed significantly. On one hand, the incidence of cancer has increased globally significantly, which demands early detection and needs more pathologists. On the other hand, the precision of medicine demands pathologists to be subspecialized to provide needed accurate precisional diagnosis. Well, no, traditionally, a pathologist can render diagnosis for diseases from head to toe. That error is outdated. However, in order for any hospital um, to subspecialize their pathology, they need more pathologists. So, give you an example. Our hospital, 25 years ago, we have 13 pathologists. Uh, everyone can do the diagnosis from head and neck to GI to G1 to everything. Um, now, after 25 years, we have more than 100 pathologists with subspecialized in 17 subspecialties. So, in order to resolve the shortage of pathologists and uh, you know, before I say that, it's estimated globally, the number of pathologists needed in past two decades will be doubled. That's a huge demand. So to solve the shortage of pathologists, we need not only expand educational efforts, such as, you know, residency fellowship program to recruit those brilliant um, medical graduates into pathology, that process is time consuming. We all know to train a um, good, qualified, capable pathologist independently render diagnosis, um, especially any subspecialty take five to 10 years. That's a long time, we cannot wait. So on the other hand, we need to integrate a more advanced technology into pathology practice. So digital pathology and telepathology is one of the ways to help us to mitigate the problem of pathology um, shortage. So compared to traditional microscopy, digital pathology has several advantages. These are very briefly. Um, so number one is automation will promote efficiency and productivity for pathologists um, in primary, um, primary diagnosis. Secondly, the remote access for telepathology will provide a platform for second opinion consultation. Third, and also is most important, is provide a platform, a technical platform, for AI-based research plausible in pathology. I believe the AI research and its products, in turn, eventually will enhance the diagnostic efficiency, accuracy, and promote the implementing of digital pathology into pathology practice globally. So technically, you have two parts, hardware and software. In past decades, the technology has been improved dramatically in digital pathology. Currently, there are about uh, more than 15 digital scanners globally available for pathology. And uh, this has been dramatically changed technically from imaging quality, scanner speed, multifunctionality for different uh, clinical settings. And uh, for example, technically, currently we have uh, from linear to nonlinear scannings, continuous loading with no continuous loading, and also the scanner not only for histology, but adapted for cytology, immunofluorescence, and also near oil lens for hematology. These are very important advances in technology, which make the technology um, more easily applicable in practice. However, there's still a drawback for these hardwares. 
Currently, there's more than a dozen scanners. Each one has their own technical platform. And to me, it's like 20, 30 years ago, Apple and Microsoft each got your hardware, each got your own software, and none of those compatible. That actually, um, you know, block the development application of digital pathology in practice. Luckily, we have a lot of smart people like Trevin who provide the software, um, you know, the management platform, which help us to solve the problem. Um, two years ago, when we fly to University of Montreal um, to um, have a tour of the Trevin platform, we're very impressed. Just in general, from pathology practice point of view, I think the next at least the six expect are going to be very important for any software to be usable in pathology. So number one is a scanner independent or agno uh, agnostic, which means this software should be compatible and integrate of a different type of scanners for different purpose of clinical setting. For example, in RE Pathology Center, currently we have uh, at least uh, four different type of scanners for totally different purpose. That's very important, the foundation. The second layer is remote access for telepathology, provide a consultation platform to bring the world-class expertise to help those um, areas or pathologies on challenge and difficult cases. The third is to generate a library database for fast curating and searching. Currently, in our pathology department, we hire more than a dozen database uh, searching technicians to identify those cases buried in the archive for clinical purpose and for research purpose. Anytime we have a project, uh, we need to ask them to do that. The turnaround time takes two to three weeks to identify that. I believe digital pathology with this smart software management gonna make it just right under a finger under uh, for pathologist. Number four is integration of this platform and compatible with the current hospital electronic system such as Epic, Beaker system. That's important because that's the future. Number five is integration of biomarkers and molecular ancillary testing, IHC, all under one umbrella, make it uh, um, available, not only for primary diagnosis and also for secondary opinion. So currently, the Cleveland Clinic provide eIHC service to other hospitals who do not have enough volume, but they need antibodies. We have more than 500 antibodies available in our lab, but other hospitals only have 100 antibodies, for example. So we'll do this and we'll, you know, digitize scanner, um, sending the imaging to the client hospitals. The last, uh, not at least, is very, very important is to provide the modules for AI-based pathology imaging research because this AI um, product, like I mentioned, will have tremendous, tremendous impact on the pathology efficiency, productivity, and implementing digital pathology globally. So at last, I would like to just mention, um, first of all, thank Trevin to provide a great technical platform. We are right now in the process to validate the teleslide, which provide a treatment, to use that to connect to our global and domestic clients to extend our worldwide expertise into those areas needed for pathology diagnosis. For the respecting the time limitation, I'll stop right here. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Bing Yang. This is really fascinating to see how digital pathology will be deeply integrated into your routine uh, in, in the very uh, close future.
so let's let's talk a bit uh, about um, what we call digital pathology. So as you know, digitization can take various forms and depths. And to simplify the, pi the picture, uh, we propose to define the space as follows. Uh, the conversion from a clinical workflow handling physical slides with a microscope at its core to a workflow digitizing those slides into high quality images that are managed through advanced software for viewing, annotating, diagnosing with uh, with or without AI and reporting with a high quality set of screens at its core. So in a digital world, the following stages uh, build up the entire end-to-end -end workflow. So we start with growth or macro imaging, which ensures traceability uh, of the samples. Uh, then slide prep with embedding, cutting and staining the slides. And of course, we need to insert slide uh, scanning using a high throughput and, and, and professional slide scanner. Then we have image storage and storage management, whether it is on cloud or on-prem. Uh, we have image viewing and analyzing capabilities, which is often called image management solution or IMS. We have automated targeted analysis uh, through advanced machine learning and AI algorithm. Uh, we can have second opinion uh, using a case sharing solution and at the end sign out reporting in a structured clinical report. As in any technological technology advances, there are many advantages, which needs of course a phase of adaptation. Implementing digital pathology, we know that requires new skills, new equipment, new infrastructures, and investment. So money and time. For a good return on investment, change management and personalized follow-up in projects are really key to success. On the other hand, the medium and long-term benefits are now proven and undeniable. First and foremost, it's all about improving patient care. This is made possible through a better time allocation and reduction of turn around time, data sharing and remote second opinion capabilities and increase clinical confidence in routine and complex diagnosis. In combination with reaching better outcomes for the patient, there are also measurable economics advantage for the labs, uh, which comes from wet lab reorganization and automation, cost reduction in slide transportation and logistics, better productivity for the pathologies via automation of processes, and improve comfort and stress reduction. In addition to its core, uh, to, to the core technologies involved in digitization, uh, clinical uh, value and economics can further benefit from the implementation of AI-powered automation tools. These tools can accelerate and vastly improve pathology by enabling new capabilities. We are talking about slide triage, Next slide. Slide triage, where AI tools can help determine in which cases should be review, which cases should be reviewed more urgently, and which physician or resources have to be assigned to. We are talking about diagnosis assistant, where AI tools can also help with cancer diagnosis and assessment, pointing instantly to particular areas of interest, counting cells, and partial. Um, auto-reporting, and we're talking about next-generation diagnosis with advanced machine learning capabilities. And as more digital data sets beco uh, become available, AI tools will be able to analyze more data, thus provide more insight and than is currently possible. So we will have novel digital biomarker, which will allow to determine which targeted therapy will deliver the best outcome for each patient. Let me now introduce you to Gaetan, who is a chief, medical of, uh, chief marketing officer of Tribune Health, and will talk about the Tribune Health platform. Gaetan. Thank you very much. 
Um, this is a great day. We're, we're not just talking about the future of digital pathology. We're also doing something pretty significant about that. So on two levels. Uh, we talk about a new solution, Calipix 5, in, in just a few minutes. But before that, a new concept, which is about a new platform. And that is a very different approach from what has been available so far uh, over the past years. And that is what uh, Google has done with its uh, Google Drive platform, Microsoft with MS Office. Um, you get Adobe with the Creative Suite as well, and Apple with iWork. Well, this is the iWork suite for digital pathology. This is what we're introducing. Instead of you know, single, simple elements that are disjointed, not necessarily integrated, working together. Well, this is basically the next stage where those different elements work together for the benefit of the pathologist's workflow and the lab itself. So we're really on a mission to deliver the most complete and integrated solution for ultimate convenience, simplicity, productivity, and at the end of the day, clinical confidence. So let's look at this in more detail. We talked to over... 200 former and current customers uh, around the world and ask them for months, what is it that will, what it is that will make your life easier, that will help you do a better job at uh, what you're ultimately uh, really designed to do, which is make a positive impact of, on human health. Uh, and the answers came as follows. One, the system has to be open and compatible. We don't want any closed system, end-to-end, -end, not open. We, we need something that is open to any file formats, any slide, any slide scanning technology. Ideally, end-to-end -end as well. We don't want to have a piece of technology here, a piece there. We want to make sure that things are working all together and seamlessly and they have a complete solution at the end, no matter what the vendor is for the different components. It needs to be modular so I can pick and choose what vendor I want to use different components from. It needs to be flexible as well. Uh, it needs to be enterprise-grade from a security, performance, and stability standpoint. It needs to also be open to getting and managing second opinions. Not everyone is specialist in every single specialty, as Dr. Yang was saying a few minutes ago. So sometimes you do need the help of an expert in a specific condition that is somewhere half, halfway around the world, and the platform will enable you to do that. Uh, also, AI algorithms, which is a big subject of the day, and you can learn a lot more about that. Dr. Yang put a lot of emphasis on that today. This really is what is needed for automation uh, in analyses for the benefit of ultimately accelerating the diagnosis of prognostic activity uh, for, uh, for uh, be able to handle more patients, more cases in the same amount of time. And then at the end of the day, it needs to be centered around the pathology or the pathologist workflow itself. We don't want to change the way they work necessarily. We want to make sure that they're able to uh, get on this technology and, and, and get the job done. So just to give you a better sense for how we have reorganized this platform, this is really across the um, workflow that was already presented by Jean-Francois a few minutes ago. You can see from left to right, upstream to downstream, from macro image acquisition all the way to reporting. And the colored boxes, whether they're green, red, or orange, represent the different components or modules of the solution, which are available to Day. Of course, the company is working actively to complete the puzzle and make sure that at the end of the day you do get uh, an entire suite, whether we develop the suite internally or we outsource those capabilities to partners that we believe may be in a better position to do a great job for you at the end. So the, at a high level, MC is MacroCam, which is a uh, solution for macro imaging and image management. STO is for storage solution. We have a great partner in Microsoft. Uh, you're leveraging their Azure platform uh, globally. And uh, of course, some clients prefer to um, store their images locally, which is fine as well. Those two options exist. Uh, and they can be managed uh, by uh, what, what we call storage management solution, which is an application that helps optimize access to images while minima minimizing the cost of storage. AIA, which stands for AI Applications, which is a subject that's going to be uh, clearly uh, ex explored over the next few moments with Saima, our head of um, AI and, uh, and um, computer vision. Uh, we talk about algorithms that we develop in-house and some others that are uh, that we partner with, with, uh, with partners. Uh, TSP, which stands for Teleslide Pathology, which is the second opinion module of the suite, allowing for that uh, function to, to happen seamlessly within, last but not least, Calipix, 
5 uh, it's announced today which is the uh, core of the suite of the platform and um, you will learn a lot more about Calipix over the next few minutes as well and you get to see a demo as well so stick around a lot more to come at the end of the day it's all about helping with digital transformation in a way that is seamless that is not easy it never is but definitely as 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 uh, the least amount of complexity as possible to get you to uh, realize your objectives at your lab or hospital level so i'd like to introduce that the very big subject of the day which is ai uh, and machine learning algorithms for automation saima ben hage she's the uh, head of uh, computer vision uh triple health and ai so saima i'd love to hear what you have to say Thank you. Hello, I'm Saima, I'm the head of AI and computer vision team, and uh, today I'm going to talk about our AI solutions. So, you probably know that AI is a performance system that uh, answers a very precisely defined question. So, you want to know if there is any cancer in a given image, AI can do that. You want to predict patient relapse, AI can also do that. So, AI is a very powerful system that acquires its knowledge and its intelligence from data. Data is very crucial uh, in constructing AI systems. So we basically feed this system with thousands to millions of cases. And it is up to AI to find the rules and to find relevant criteria to make a decision. So at Tribune Health, our data is essentially digital pathology slides. And we are working with a particular type of AI, which is called convolutional neural network, which allows you to capture some patterns from the image and make a decision. And we are essentially using two types of AIs. So we have supervised models and we have unsupervised models. So supervised models requires annotation from pathologists. So it aims to reproduce the pathologist interpretation, uh, inter uh, reading and uh, annotation. And with this kind of AI, we can do many exciting tasks. So you can classify slides, you can segment tissue and cells, you can de detect particular event in the image, for instance, mitosis uh, object. And unsupervised models is completely different. So it doesn't require any annotation from the pathologist and it can give you a different interpretation and a new reading. And with this kind of AI, you can generate, you can generate new images, new biomarkers, or you can also cluster cases. So at Tribune Health, we are employing this technology to make the pathologist workflow more efficient. So our goal is to save the pathologist time, to enable his comfort, and also to enable patient to have the best therapy and the personalized therapy. And today I'm going to talk about two examples. So we have first example on uh, colon cancer diagnosis. So it is uh, a tool which allows pre-screening of a lesion. So it visualizes a class map indicating the different kind of lesion that could appear in an image. So that's a tool that would save the, the pathologist time by guiding his attention toward the risky areas. Our second solution is a prognosis tool for breast cancer. So it will enable pathologists to choose the best therapy for their patient. So traditionally, pathologists analyze a bunch of biomarkers to be able to decide of the therapy. And for example, uh, to, uh, to know if a patient would benefit of hormonal therapy, it is necessary to prove that at least 10% of cells are reacting to that therapy. So pathologists need to count manually thousands of cells in the image, and that's time consuming and hard task. So most of the time they are giving an approximation, but that makes the uh, decision subjective and weakly reproducible. So having a tool that counts every cell in the image is really valuable for the pathologist. So that will ensure reproducibility. The decision is not any more sensitive to human fatigue or any other condition. It will favor the pathologist's comfort and it will save the time so that they can focus on more meaningful tasks and uh, more important tax tasks. So what is particular in our technology? So our algorithms are carefully designed to deliver four important criteria uh, to make our sol solution employable in a clinical workflow. 
So first we have a robust system, which is insensitive to uh, stain variation, to scanner variation, which is very common in histopathology slides. Second, we have explainable system. So our AI is designed to make, uh, to enable pathologists to understand the rational behind the AI decision. So we enable them to control the system and to improve the system. Third, we have a resilient system, which is able to manage out of distribution cases, rare events or improper cases. And finally, we have a responsible AI, which, is, which respects the, the patient privacy and um, in compliance with ethical uh, standards. So another particular thing that we are using in our technology is data efficient AI which is very important to have a performance system. So using the data efficiently is really very important to have good performance. So you all know that constructing AI requires a large amount of data. So more you have data, best, better is your system. But we believe that this is partially true because we all saw that in the previous data challenges that all participants have the same amount of data. They have a lot of data, but different performance. And we win, we won two of those challenges because we are implementing data efficient AI. So we are combining many techniques. So first we are using data augmentation tools to uh, artificially increase the amount of data by transferring the images from one scanner domain to another scanner domain, for example. We are also working in close collaboration with pathologists. So we are trying to model their knowledge in our AI model. So we are trying to make uh, to avoid non-reasonable decision by the AI system. And finally, we are using transfer learning method, which allows to transfer the, the, the knowledge from one system to another system. So all what we learned today on colon cancer or breast cancer is transferable to new knowledge. And that's really very valuable to have a performance system. So all those technology allows us to have a performance system and have a panel of uh, application, including colon cancer and breast cancer. And we are working on additional organs and, uh, <clears throat> and the new therapeutic areas to, uh, that will be coming very soon. So uh, thank you for uh, your attention. I uh, just want to uh, introduce you Mike Weber, VP Cells North America, uh, who will talk about Calopix. Thank you, everyone. Uh, th that was a very tough act to follow, Simon. Thank you. But I'll do my best here. So as my uh, slide implies, my name is Michael Weber. I'm the Vice President of uh, Sales for North America. Uh, and I'm here to talk about Calipix. And what I'd like to do is demonstrate, or so my, my conversation today is about the Calipix, about the next generation AI powered computational pathology solution. So how we can best accommodate and kind of explain this is in three separate ways. So the first way I'd like to explain is functions. And what does functions mean? So, you know, at people understand a system, an IM image management system, an IMS system that needs to manage, needs to view, index, analyze, and share. So for those clinicians out there, you know that this is the cost of entry. This is what needs to happen in for you to be successful in this industry. However, what Tribune and what Calipix provides is a capability to leverage up to 10 years of experience in doing this. This is not inherent with other vendors in some cases. This provides you with the capability to understand the feedback, the pains, the successes, and the interpretation of how a system needs to operate within the context of a pathology workflow and how they manage their systems. The second, and the thing that we should also involve, is a system needs to be robust and expand with your existing uh, framework and department. Uh, currently, Calpix has the capability to do anatomical pathology, has histology and hematology. So again, we're growing, building, and managing to incorporate more and more uh, opportunities for you in your department. The third, and as Simon had mentioned previously, is the AI-powered automation. So as a separate entity, AI automation is something that's very commonplace and is very interesting, and, and people are starting to really invest a significant amount of money in this. Tribune is no, uh, uh, no difference. We're, ex we're expanding our capabilities and 
in, in AI automation and AI uh, development. We're spending a lot of making a lot of investments in this specific area. But the unique part of our system is that we actually are integrated into the image management system. So it stands alone, but it also stands as a part of our platform. So when we talk about platform, we talk about the integration. This allows research capabilities to be brought into the clinical capability and understand that this is a robust platform that can grow and expand with the department. And as AI applications come from ourselves or third-party applications, we can start to develop them and put them in for the system for your use. This, uh, the second is the advantages. And for the people who are on this, on this, on this uh, uh, webinar, the, the clinicians, uh, whether you've actually gone through a digital transformation or you're looking to, you're kicking the tires and you're, and you're just looking at this, the mainstay that people try and identify as the most important reason why they're moving towards a digital platform is the efficiencies that it provides. And in order to convey the message of efficiencies, in my opinion, we have to kind of ca categorize in two different ways. First is the anatomical pathologist, the person who's reading this, for sure. People comment, that's a lot of what happens. But what about the people that bring it to that position, the techs, the administrators, everything that happens from the point of uh, a patient, uh, the first slice, right? through to bring it to the anatomical pathologist. So the first one I'll talk about is the, the, the pathologist. What we have done as Tribune is we've done studies to demonstrate that moving from an analog platform into a digital environment, you can save upwards of 25% savings in time for that pathologist in terms of their uh, time review and uh, upwards of 18% in their turnaround time for report generation. The corollary to that, when you look at things that are brought to the, the pathologist, so all the work that's done prior to, digital pathology has a major impact on it in the aggregate view. So when you look at the aggregate view, there's upwards of 18% savings, time savings, in terms of the, uh, the time that is required to do a digital uh, preparation versus that of analog. And I'd ask any clinician out there, if someone said to you, in an eight-hour workday, I'm going to give you back one hour of your day, I wonder how many people would raise up their hand. So from our perspective, we feel the value of efficiency is inherent, and we'd like to have the conversation to kind of move that forward. The second advantage is the inevitable human error. Um, human error is, is, is a thing that we uh, inherently, as, as humans, uh, are common. Uh, it happens with us all the time. So from a human error perspective, digital pathology can reduce uh, misplaced uh, and mishandled slides and uh, in, 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 in opportunity to reduce uh, human error. Clinical collaboration. Another thing of digital pathology that a lot of people recognize is the ca capability to share. Our system, whether it's urgent or important, has a single button click where you can collaborate with with a colleague, subspecialty, instant and real-time review for, for, your, for your capabilities and for your, for, your, for your clinical diagnosis. The third is value. And one thing I want to talk to you about the value position is the enhanced clinical confidence. So you have uh, the advanced visualiz visualization techniques, you have our clinical tool set, and then the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, the sharing of the images, which helps the uh, pathologist in terms of their clinical uh, digital pathology uh, uh, clinical review. The ultimate flexibility. The one thing I really highlight here here is that there is a compartmentalization with Calipix. You don't need to do this all at once. You can do it in pieces. We can help you work with that to identify what areas make sense, what areas are important, how do we make those changes, do it in piecemeal at your pace, and expand as you see fit. That's where I think one of the advantages that we can have and we can present to you. And finally is increased lab productivity. I mentioned this in the enhancing piece. That, at the end of the day, is the reason why we're moving into a digital environment. So from our perspective, with all the things that we've mentioned here, we think that we have a capability to provide you, our customer, our future customer, or your future customer's friends with the capability of moving into a digital environment. And without further ado, I'm going to introduce Nolan Pater, Pater excuse me, uh, who is going to talk about Calipix demo. I'm Nolwenn Petit, the product owner of Calopix. So welcome to the Calopix 5 demo. We are going to highlight the solution top three benefits visually. First one, ultimate flexibility. Second one, increased lab productivity. And third, higher clinical confidence. So Calopix 
5. Provides ultimate flexibility to configure and run your lab your way. This fully web-based application, as you can see, enables remote work anytime. Calopix is also compatible with most scanner image format from Brightfield here to fluorescence, like that. For example, here this is a fish slide and the stack. giving you total flexibility in how to build your digital workflow. It also enables increased productivity through advanced workflows and automation. Today's lab needs to process more cases faster and with a higher level of analysis sophistication. Calopix files allows you to accelerate and simplify your case analysis with a very intuitive UI and some advanced tools such as navigation tracking. So for example, here in green and image regi registration allowing you to compare easily various staining side by side like that. And then the navigation is um, synchronized. You can easily access patient history thanks to our cost-effective archiving module called storage management working seamlessly with Calopix. Finally, it provides superior clinical confidence to deliver answers you can trust to drive treatment plan decisions Calopix 5 ensures full confidence in your diagnosis with an advanced visualization engine, remote second opinion, and AI automation tools, both proprietary and integrated third party, party available in the near future. Thanks for listening. And now let me introduce you to Catherine Gettier, the head of pathology department at Paris Seclay Hospital Grouping. Thank you, Norman, for this live presentation. Remember, guys, we're live at this time. This is not a recording. I'd like to introduce to you uh, Dr. Catherine Gettier, uh, who is uh, going to talk to us about her experience in her uh, career here with the pathology and digital pathology uh, at Paris Saclay Hospital Group. Catherine, are you with us? Yes, I am with you. You have the floor. Thank you so much. Excellent. Okay. Okay, so uh, thank you for your uh, invitation. I think my camera is not perfect, no? Do you see me? Yes, okay. So thank you for your uh, invitation. What I am going to cover today is our journey towards a fully uh, digital diagnosis workflow. So I am Professor Catherine Gettier. I am the head of the Department of Pathology in Bicetre Hospital, Assistance Public Hôpitaux de Paris in France. Uh, we have a team of 10 pathologists and we diagnose over uh, 30,000 cases per year, which means an average of uh, 1,100 slides uh, per day. Um, the, uh, our pathology department has been using Calopix uh, uh, in clinical practice of digital pathology uh, for uh, of, over three years. And over this period, Calopix was uh, clinically validated by each pathologist in his or her daily routine uh, through the comparison of glass slides uh, with its digital counterparts. This experience in using Calopix has reinforced our confidence in digital diagnosis and our department has transitioned to a fully digital workflow. Um, this past summer, our department was asked to uh, evaluate uh, the new web-enabled Calopix uh, 5 software. For that, we compare diagnosis made by three pathologists uh, with, using Calopix 5 uh, with the diagnosis made by the same three pathologists on the same cases using uh, Calopix. I think you don't see me very well. Sorry, my camera is always, always moving. I'm sorry. Uh, so comparing with those uh, uh, diagnostic made by the same three pathologists on the same cases using Calopix uh, 4, uh, 
prior, uh, a few weeks prior, which correspond to the uh, washout period uh, recommended by the American College of Pathologists. Calopix 4 was considered to be uh, the gold standard, as we have been getting satisfactory results so far. Uh, the comparison proved that uh, diagnosis made with uh, Calopix 5 were exactly the same as those made with Calopix 4, thus reinforcing again our confidence in uh, our clinical diagnosis. One valuable uh, aspect uh, of uh, uh, our relationship with, uh, with Tribune uh, is the ability to provide active uh, feedback to a uh, Tribune uh, team uh, with, uh, uh, to, on Calopix product with a mutual goal to uh, develop digital solutions that best serve the uh, pathologist's needs. It was indeed a regarding experience for us. Uh, as we can see, our feedback reflected in the Calopix 5 software release. So, indeed, uh, digital pathology brings tremendous uh, benefits uh, to our clinical, diagnostic clinical, clinical workflow. Uh, a few examples are as follow. Uh, LIS uh, integ integration, which facilitates efficient workflow. Uh, it can also prevent the impact of human error. In a digital uh, environment, uh, uh, slice specimens are automatically assigned uh, to the patient's record, uh, thus uh, uh, avoiding the potential for uh, allocations and filling errors. Pathologists can evaluate for them sections from any location uh, with uh, Calopix access. And uh, the last but not the least, digital uh, pathology allows multiple applications into a single platform, including uh, growth imaging, uh, microscopy, frozen section, uh, second opinion, teaching, and research. So the transition, uh, next slide please, the, the transition from a standard analog pathological workflow to a fully digital uh, framework in a clinical setting is such achievable. However, it does require advanced and detailed uh, planning. Recommended paths to successful implementations include a team project, high quality pre-analytic steps, strong IT support from the hospital, close collaboration and mutual trust uh, with the IMS provider, which is mandatory to ensure that uh, the transition from glass slide to digital is as seamless as possible. Uh, close uh, uh, continuing uh, uh, efforts to improve the, the workflow after our transition uh, to digital was completed. I was medical and managing team um, continued to work actively with Tribune to improve our workflow and to reach uh, our new challenges in digital pathology. We look forward to our future where we are exploring the integration and evaluation uh, of artificial intelligence algorithms to assist in our clinical diagnosis. I should note that our experience in moving from standard analog workflow to um, a digital, uh, fully digital framework has not been without its challenges, uh, but today our department is pleased to uh, operate in a fully digital workflow and the transition has positioned our laboratory uh, to take advantage of future innovations uh, that digital pathology will generate. I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Getty. We really appreciate your time. This was very insightful. And uh, again, thank you very much. Look forward to maybe some uh, questions and answers in just a few minutes from the, from the audience. I'd like to uh, transition to uh, the next subject, which is the need for a pathologist-centric approach, which will be discussed by Dr. Um, uh, Professor N.T. Zlobek, president of the Swiss Consortium for Digital Pathology and head of translational research unit at University of Bern, Switzerland. Um, Inti, Slobek, can you hear me? Yes, perfectly. Perfect. You have the floor. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, so I'm really delighted actually to be here today to just give you a very, very short overview about a couple of points that in fact have already been majorly discussed with the speakers just before, but perhaps some points could also be reiterated re here um, just for completion's sake. So the first thing I wanted to mention are, you know, uh, in fact, digital pathology is a very big IT project. 
it's very easy to get distracted by all of the nice to haves and to not focus maybe entirely on the must haves. And those must haves are of course, a pathologist, pathologist centric approach. So the first thing that many of the speakers before have discussed is of course the inclusion of AI algorithms into IMSs, which are really there to hopefully alleviate the work of pathologists. However, there can be a distraction when it comes to um, new tools. It's a very exciting field and being able to include deep learning algorithms into sort of daily routine of pathologists is something that is very, very exciting. However, it's very easy also to get off the course with what is exactly needed by our pathologists in order to really alleviate work and reduce time. So on the one hand, there is of course, you know, uh, you know, algorithms that might detect cancer. However, there's also the much more, let's say, difficult task of counting features, but those features have to be uh, basically counted or quantified in correspondence to a certain guideline. Pathologists are working based on guidelines and they have to produce results that fit into those guidelines. And if it's outside of those guidelines, for instance, instead of looking at a particular region of interest for key 67, but looking at the whole slide, what do you do with that information that comes in from the whole slide? So this is just to underline the point that sometimes the communication between computer scientists or people who are developing those algorithms and pathologists who are really using those algorithms needs always to be strengthened. And this is not always such an easy point because those two different kinds of people might also be working at different institutions, different kinds of, um, you know, uh, they have different kinds of industrial partnerships. So that's maybe one point to really just highlight the communication and the working together between computer scientists, the people designing algorithms, and of course, the people who are really at the source using them in a daily way. The second point is about integration of different components. So let's assume we do have these AI algorithms that are being produced. Now it's time to really include those in a seamless workflow. Digital pathology is more than just a slide scanner. It was mentioned earlier. It starts at the time even that the message is arriving to the Pathology Institute that there is a specimen that is there. So that whole process, which can be a paperless transmission, which can affect every single step in the lab, from improper, let's say, barcoding, to cutting sections that are too thick, to making sure that the dyes or the, the, the colors in the lab are staying the same over time, to, I think I mentioned, thick sections, which can all affect, for instance, how the scanner is gonna take these focus points. All of those kinds of pre-analytical variables, this is even way before the slide or the scan even shows up in the IMS of the pathologist. That's really the seamless workflow that we're talking about from beginning to end. So it's easy to forget that point. And of course, this is made for the pathologist to be able to have as few possible clicks as possible in order to reach their goal. So we had this as a big experience here with us. We are of course, um, using different components of our digital pathology system. It does not come from one vendor or even two vendors. It comes from multiple vendors. And we want that all of these points be integrated to the point where our pathologist doesn't need to click to open another, let's say, another product that is one, two clicks too many. Uh, and then they will not be enthusiasts of digital pathology. This brings me to the third point, which is really this openness of systems. We want to be able to play with different components of the system. We don't necessarily want to be locked in. We want to use what comes out of diagnostics for research. And we want to use what we've done for research to try to put that into diagnostic. It's a vicious circle, at least for those people who are interested in doing research at their institutes. It's something to never forget. How do you utilize the power of the research side and diagnostic side and put these two things together? This is not so easy and actually took a few years of experience from our side to figure out how to optimize this process and not get tricked um, into buying something that maybe doesn't even allow us to export our images. And the final thing is the structured reporting, which is something that someone else also mentioned, I think uh, Professor Yang at the beginning, about finding our images once they are produced. So it seems like something so basic, but many, if not a large majority of pathology institutes are still not working with structured reporting, including ours. So how do we even find the cases that fit certain criteria in, in order for us to continue our education 
or even to bring out those images for development of AI algorithms with. It's impossible for us even to find cases in our LIS. This is something that is so basic, but is only going to be accentuated in this world now of digital pathology. So structured reporting is something that I would uh, like to suggest everybody to very seriously contemplate. Um, and so that's all I would like to say at this point. Thank you very much for your attention. And of course, I'm here in case you have questions. Thank you so much, uh, Inti Zlobek. We really appreciate the time. This is very inspiring and, and very uh, very strong statements. Uh, and they make a lot of sense. They, res they resonate. I think they're going to resonate really well with the audience. So now is the time for questions. Uh, we have a platform right here that is waiting for your questions to come through. Please don't be shy. Uh, don't be afraid to be first. It's OK. There's value in that. Uh, Go ahead and send in your questions uh, anytime. We have some questions probably from the audience as well. We'll mix them up. I appreciate the speakers for staying around for a few more minutes with us and helping um, put some light on some of these aspects as well. So the team is going to come back and sit around us here. Please come on, come on back. We are going to uh, take place. And I'm going to be moderating those questions. Uh, let's see. Let's get started whenever we're ready. So I'm going to look at maybe. Why don't we start with the audience here? Uh, start with there, and then we'll go. We'll go online in just a moment. Go ahead. Um, so I was wondering how I could book a demo to learn more about Calypso Five. Who can answer that question? When do we book a demo? Uh, I think you just go to the, our brand new website, so Tribune with a U without e, tribune.health, and then you can uh, leave your coordinates, your name, and we will uh, call you back, or you can send an email directly, uh, that, or, or contact your main correspondent at Tribune. So that's a way to get a demo. We are ready for that. Let's ask the question again, yeah. What was the question again? The question was, when can we book a demo, and how do we do that? What is the process to book a demo? And Jean-François, you were saying, referring to our new website, right? Yeah, so just connect to the, our brand new website, what I was uh, saying, Tribune with, uh, with a U, uh, without E, dot L's, uh, and uh, leave, a, leave a message as a book a demo, or leave a message, so you can leave your name and your, your email, phone number, and we will call you back uh, very, very, as soon as possible, yeah, very rapidly. Great, great. Thank you so much for that answer. Uh, a question uh, from one of, our, one of our online viewers. I would like to ask Professor Gettier, what proportion of pathologists are reporting entirely digitally in your organization? What proportion of pathologists are fully digital? Katrin. You still with us, Katrin Gettier? I think just maybe on mute. That is what live shows bring. We hear Katrin. There you go, yes. Katrin. Perfect. We don't see you. Maybe I think your camera is off. Maybe you turn it back on. Switch on my camera. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So the question was, let me just remind you, I would like to ask Professor Gettier, what proportion of pathologists are reporting entirely digitally? The, the answer is a nine uh, among the 10 pathologists of the lab. One of the pathologists is still reluctant to digital pathology. However, uh, he's perfectly able to uh, uh, perform a frozen section on, on digital uh, slides. So I am not afraid for the future. And I think he will be uh, progressively convinced to, to move to digital pathology. Excellent. This is a pretty good majority. Nine out of nice, ten. Nine percent. That's that's a hundred percent, pretty much, almost, right? Excellent. Thank you so much for your answer. We have another question online. Hello, is the AI solution, the two solutions mentioned by Dr. Ben Hedge, uh, an example of an available algorithm within the Calypix Five AI application? The the two examples that you provided today are they going to be integrated within the platform? And if so, I assume uh, when would that happen? Okay. Uh, thanks for the question. So, um, actually, in Calypix, we have many uh, um, several solutions that are already integrated in our uh, software, and uh, th those that I mentioned, so uh, colon cancer pre-screening and uh, uh, breast cancer uh, diagnosis are uh, in integration and will be available for the end of the year. Great, excellent, and um, well, I assume we have a also a. 
um, a series of, of additional projects in the pipeline. Uh, I understand both internal and also uh, with third party, third party players game. as well, right? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Both of them are uh, an integration uh, currently in our software. Great. Thank you so much. All right. Maybe another question in the audience here. So when is the platform going to be available? Mike, uh, you want to talk to us about that, maybe? Sure. The platform is available now. Uh, it, it's just in terms of when you, uh, an installation requires time, effort, and coordination. So from the framework of when, we can do it now. How and why and where, and the implementation is a requirement of, uh, of coordinating with your facility. Great. It's like the Apple uh, keynotes, right? Product available today, right? Um, okay, so the next question here. Um, okay, well, it looks like this one actually disappeared from the from the list. But I know we have another potentially not a question in, in the audience, right? Who would like to? Oh, ah, go first. Okay. Uh, Yeah, so it is a web-based platform, obviously. So I assume global. So go ahead. Yeah, so I mean, it's a web-based platform. So it's a, uh, the the limitations are the restriction of the re uh, regulations of your specific country. So uh, if and where the regulations are approved, we can install. Uh, and so Europe, many European countries, Canada, and we're looking to expand that uh, the regulatory approval in many other countries as well. Excellent. Let's see any other questions as well. Yes. Uh, as it's a major upgrade, uh, how to keep the data of the older version of complete and use them in the new version? Oh, you know what? I'm sorry, go ahead and. Yeah. Okay, uh, I'm asking how to keep data of the older version of Calopix and use them in the new, the new version, the Calopix 5. Thank you. Great question. Okay, if you mention by data cases and images, all will be kept in... C cases and images, yeah. Yes, okay. So all will be uh, kept in uh, the new version. This is just an update. So all information that you have in the old version, you will have this information in the new version. Okay, thank you. Okay, great. I have another question. Coming through, to what extent is AI support in the biomarker analysis of NSCLC tumor material available and what is to come? Maybe in the audience or, or I mean, I mean online or any, any clinicians or anybody here in-house. In so we're talking about NSCLC. Yeah. So the question is to what extent is AI support in the biomarker analysis of N a non-small lung cancer tumor material available and what is to come? Yes, that's a project we are currently working on, uh, defining a, an algorithm working on non-small lung cancer. Uh, so combining uh, HNE slide, but also many immunohistochemistry slides and even genomics uh, alteration. So to define a single AI model able to predict uh, uh, to, to predict uh, the survival or to predict the response to a targeted therapy. So that's a current active domain we are working on, and I'm sure pretty uh, of other, equi uh, other teams are also working on that. Great. I have another question here online. Uh, it is actually asked to uh, Dr. Yang at Cleveland Clinic. If you had one biggest, the biggest wish, like Christmas, uh, Christmas wish to make from a, uh, a digital pathology vendor, you, you've talked about obviously wishes before, but like the biggest challenge you're facing today, what would it be, and and what what would you expect to to see happen, near future, or long future? What's the vision basically? What's the biggest biggest need you have? Yeah. Um, so um, uh, we've been established a e-pathology center for more than 10 years, but still we're slowly moving from secondary opinion to primary diagnosis. For primary diagnosis, a big hurdle is really um, several aspects. Um, because for pathology, for digitized pathology, is quite a different than radiology, right? For radiology, everything um, you know, digitized at the very beginning, you don't need uh, the filming 
um, you know, um, process anymore. But for pathologists, uh, uh, you still need uh, the 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 uh, pre analytical. I use pre analytical. That's a pre digitized. Uh, the process is still there. For example, you. You need a tissue blocking, you need a cut a slice, you need a stain that, you need a storage for those slides too. So the digital pathologist is an add-on. So it's a tremendous uh, um, economically financial burden right now for most uh, department of pathology to jump on that till you resolve the, the problem. So right now we're in a catch-22. That's what I call it for digitized uh, pathology implementing into the practice. Uh, what does that mean? That means, you know, without a forefront of uh, $5 million, we cannot, uh, you know, to do that digitized pathology for our practice. For example, in Cleveland Clinic, every day is more than 3,000 blocks tissue blocks to cut, more than 1,000 IHC immune staining slides, right? To translate that into your, then you have a 17 subspecialty. You have more than 100 pathologists which work at main campus and 13 regional hospitals, right? And uh, so this is a huge, huge, um, you know, add-on. So in order to resolve that, you have to find a, um, you know, um, equivalent things. I think the future uh, equivalent things is AI. Till you have AI product to apply for the digital pathology, I think the digitized pathology can be slowly moving. However, this is catch-22. How can you generate AI product without the digitized? Right? So the AI product is module, have to build on, you have to give up your microscopy, you have to digitize your slides. So I think AI uh, along with the digital pathology before you totally implement it for a primary diagnosis, uh, there are some steps for AI to penetrate into, um, you know, into the digitized pathology domain, working with pathologists uh, and uh, to, you know, generate a product. For example, you know, like uh, two uh, great speakers mentioned this, digitized, we know, promote efficiency, productivity. You know, when you bring the AI, for example, KI-67 and other IGCs and other things that you can, for example, with the prostate biopsy, if you can generate a program to get rid of 80% negative, uh, um, you know, screen for the prostate biopsy, then you can save probably three FTI, um, uh, you know, FTE in our practice. That is saving pathologists will translate into financial to the um, um, to future digitize. So that's my view. All right, Amen. I have to answer this. Amen, right? Uh, very good. Another question for any of you uh, three uh, professionals uh, out there. Um, this is a question for pathologists in the presenting team. Do you envis envision a complete loss of microscope, uh, the microscope for pathologists' offices? 100%, no more, zero. And if so, when? And are there areas that microscope can do still uh, better than, than digital, like uh, polarization? How do you deal with those? Whoever wants to answer. I'll leave that question to two professors who had uh, more experience than me. Thanks. <laughs> yes, sir. I, I kept a, a microscope in, in my office because I need it only for polarization light. Uh, but I think there are, there are some progress uh, uh, in the in the scanners uh, that will uh, uh, make them able to, to to examine slides in polarized light. So I am waiting for this progress uh, to uh, uh, eliminate totally my microscope from my office. Excellent. Uh, Jean-François, did you want to add anything about that that aspect, that missing element or link? No, uh, I th I think we we are working. So we start with histology. We are now working also on cytology. So polarized uh, light, of course, is, is one thing, but it's we are going 
every year deeper in, into the daily activity of, of the lab. So I think uh, we can truly imagine a pathology department without any microscope in the near future, for sure. Excellent. I've got a, a nice message to Jean-François here. Jean-François, hi from Quebec. We are, where we are currently using Calopix for our huge project on lung cancer, patients treated by immunotherapy, tumor microenvironment. You probably know who that is, right? Not exactly, but uh, they are welcome. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Send me an email. Okay, it says... Um, and hello to Quebec. We have a lot of customer and potential customers there. Yeah, excellent. Great, great message. Uh, another question. Uh, Dr. Goudour here. Goudour, G U. D U R. If we get your AI today, which fields can I use them into? Breast, prostate. So um, our our uh, AI today is f focusing on. Um, so as, as we uh, said, we have two kinds of AI. We have in-house models, and we have. Um, also, uh, third-party models. In-house models is essentially breast cancer and colon cancer. So if you uh, have uh, our AI, you will essentially, um, for the short term, you will have uh, these uh, two kinds of models. Uh, but uh, for the third-party models, we are uh, thinking about in integrating uh, prostate cancer. So that will be also coming uh, soon. Great. Now, and, 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 oh. Okay, another question about uh, AI. This is the subject of the day, obviously, and we expected that. I would like to know if your AI for KI67, ER plus PR, HER2, is ROI or whole slide analysis? So, uh Currently, uh, the, uh, the, the version that we developed this year uh, requires um, to, to fix uh, manually an ROI region. So, um, so that's because um, our model is focusing uh, only in infiltra infiltrating cancer and not uh, in situ cancer. Uh, but uh, for the next version, we are thinking about extending this model to be um, uh, completely automatic to be able to recognize automatically this uh, ROI areas. Excellent, excellent. Any other questions in the audience here? We're running really close to our closing time. It's 18:11 uh, uh, here in Paris. Almost time for a glass of wine, right? The Parisian way, the French way, aperitif. Uh, do we have any other questions online? Uh, maybe we have one more. Thank you so much for the presentation. Oh, exciting future in the digital arena. That's just a statement to say congratulations. I think this could be the great final word for today's uh, keynote. I want to thank everyone around us for the great work they've done. Of course, our speakers uh, from all over the world. Thank you so much for your contribution. This this was the pearl, three pearls of, of, of the day. We really appreciate it. We hope this is going to help. I understand uh, and I'm going to let, give the last word, of course, to Jean-François here. Jean-François? Yeah, thank you. So I think this, uh, this was clearly uh, illuminating the future of pathology, which is for sure digital. I really want to thank uh, Dr. Benyang, Professor Gaetier, Professor Zlobeck uh, for their time and their uh, brilliant presentation of, of, their, uh, of, of their vision. And uh, I want to thank all the audience we had this uh, tonight and hope to follow up on web, on our new website, and uh, go for extended discussion around it for sure. Thank you very much.